Well everyone, Tales of Aria hype season is definitely starting a little bit early. Well, what is up everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name's Louie. As you know, uh, yesterday, Rudy from Alpha Investments put up this video, uh, you know, officially announcing that Mark Poole is going to be an artist in Tales of Aria. And then also Saint from the Fable Hunters and Ada had a great interview uh, with, with um, James White. And they, you know, they kind of announced that a couple days ago. Amazing things happening. It's just crazy. It's hard to keep up with everything. It's awesome. Super stoked for everything that's going on in the community. Um, I want to talk a little bit about artwork and the importance of it. I want to go all the way back to like the 1975, before I was alive, when Dungeons and Dragons was starting up. Yeah, you know, I got really into D&D a couple years ago and anytime I get into something, I like to I like to go all the way back to the beginning of it and really that's like what actually honestly made me so excited about Flesh and Blood is cuz I feel like I started very close to the beginning as we look into like the 25 year from now. Um, and so I go I went all the way back to the beginning of Dungeons and Dragons. I read some books about it. I really learned about Dungeons and Dragons. And one of the things I learned uh, was that the artwork is what really helped the game get traction in comparison to the competition. Okay, stay with me. The artwork for Dungeons and Dragons way back at the beginning really helped the game get traction as compared to the you know the other games that were going on. And that's because the game utilized things uh, that had never been created before. They had they had creatures that had never been seen before. So uh, you know they made artwork so that people could visualize what they were talking about. And there were some other games at the time that were just the RPG element that didn't have art, you know, those stupid little pictures. I, I wish I still had my first edition Dungeons and Dragons book. I, I, I don't know, I must have sold it when we moved everything. Anyway, um, but you know, those little pictures that, you know, we look at now and they're like doodles, but they're kind of like iconic uh, pieces of artwork now as well. And those allowed people to visualize uh, the game that they were playing that they couldn't understand. And that's like, if you go back and look at the history of Dungeons and Dragons, a lot of people would say like that is one of the key ideas, one of the key um, instruments in the success of Dungeons and Dragons. Now, what does it have to do with Flesh and Blood? Um, Magic the Gathering came around and it was similar. You know, you could put the card on the table and you were able to re recognize what that card was without even having to read it or ha hear the name. Uh, and, and that kind of, they took this idea from Dungeons and Dragons to implement it. Okay, so now we have one of the oldest Magic the Gathering artists in the first two years of a game coming in to Flesh and Blood. And I just like, I am so ecstatic about it, and here's why. One of the one of the things with Magic the Gathering that it's fine, it's it's just a different direction that they've gone. Uh, you know, they've gone back to it, which is like why I'm a little bit interested in like the D and D set. Why I'm a little bit interested in um, in the Modern Horizons two is they've gone back to this older art style. Uh, and Mark Poole is a fantastic artist, and his art style is is one that a lot of us I think. Um, like a lot better than the kind of like super digitized, super, um, you know, super, uh, you know, computer generated. Uh, and I think that it's going to be a really good win. Um, and I think the, the artwork is beautiful. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I, I hope, he, I wonder if he has more than one card. That would be super interesting. Um, but here's the thing. Because artwork allows you to visualize a card, Right, because artwork allows you to understand what you know. You think Command and Conquer. You see a Command and Conquer. You see the guy, the red. Do I have one up here? Oh, it's all the way back there. You see a Command and Conquer. You see the red, and you're like, I don't even have to think about it. Like I don't have to read the card. I don't even have to know the name. They just put it down. You don't read the card. You see the picture. Uh, and this iconic nature of artwork is why I think LSS is on the route uh, to to just absolutely knocking out of the park with Flesh and Blood. I've you know complained about some things. I've talked about some stuff that I think we can do better. I, I hope that they do. I hope that you know James White and the team watches videos and take some of the uh, uh, the, the criticisms into account, but something that they are doing so well. Look at my background. Look at it. Like, I care so, the artwork is so good that I was like, I wanna play Matt. I want every single play Matt, all the way up to Command and Conquer. I'm still missing Art of War. But yeah, like the point is like the artwork is so iconic and so just like, 
mm, it's just so good that it gets you excited to play. It brings you into the world. It allows you to visualize, you know, kind of what might be happening. Like if you look at like head jab and leg kick or the um, what's hamstring shot, right? With the leg, the you know, the error going through the guy's leg. Like it's so good and it allows you to really immerse yourself into this world. Another reason why I really think PVE is coming out. Like the way that they put these cards, like there's so much energy into world building in the cards, it would be such low hanging fruit to do something like that with PVE. Now, so going back to the artists, um, the, this is going to be a bigger deal. I, I when, when, when I watched the same interview, I was like, all right, that's cool. Um, when I when I watched the Rudy video, I was like, this is really cool, the artwork's fantastic. But it wasn't until I watched and looked through the, the comment section on Rudy's video, uh, and, and also it was in another Facebook group that I'm a part of with a lot of Magic the Gathering fans, that I realized how big of a deal it is. You know, I wasn't around early in Magic the Gathering. Mark Poole, I love his artwork, it, you know, it's iconic. Uh, it, but like for me, like it's just not like my generation of Magic the Gathering. Well, these people in these in these chats, uh, I kept seeing this thing. One of them, one of them said, "I never thought that I would buy a box of Flesh and Blood, but now I'm going to pre-order Tales of Aria." Like because the the following the history, like Flesh and Blood LSS has essentially just taken just just grabbed a chunk of history from 25 years of Magic the Gathering experience and taking it and just and just put it in and just like whoosh, just like put it in to Tales of Aria and this is going to drive a lot of excitement a lot of um, new intrigue people I, I mean I really think that there are going to be some Magic the Gathering players there are people who collect every Mark, Mark Poole artwork right who collect every card from Mark Poole for Magic the Gathering those same people are going to collect the Mark Poole card I mean, they're gonna do it. Like, they're gonna open up a box to try to get it. They're gonna want to play Matt. I mean, they're gonna be Rudy. Like Rudy's Patreon thing, his his uh, his kit is gonna sell it instantly because that's the play of that. Like, it, like that is going to be the driving factor, probably over the the box. <laughs> like, like just like eh, just wrap that in your head. Like that is going to be the driving factor over the box for the Rudy kit. And like, that's what happened. Like that is the, the like artwork. It, it's a little bit like music, right? Like, um, you know, the, there's an Eminem lyric, right? That, like they say music can alter moods and talk to you, whatever, like, you know, in like, artwork can do that too when you look at a piece of art if you know if you like it that much like it can bring you joy or it can put you into a world it can it allows you to escape like that's what it does uh, and that same if that's a if that's a that's a big emotional that's a big emotional connection that is going to work in inverse now like it's going to work in inverse to bring people into this world, into this, not into this world. It's going to bring people into, into this, you know, our world, into our, our community. Uh, and so this is big news. This is huge stuff. Um, it's super exciting. It's really cool to like, not just hear, but like see the artwork. Like I, I think, um, I think this spoiler season is going to be interesting. It's going to be a little different. I feel, uh, with, you know, the big spoiler at, um, at Vegas and it's just gonna be super exciting. I hope we're, I think we're off to like a crazy start, exciting start. Uh, it'll be interesting to see like, you know, I, I do think pre-orders are going to start. We talked about pre-orders last, you know, yesterday, but, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where those go, you know, when they come out and they, you know, I don't know if PVE, like I just have a feeling, I just know like PVE is gonna be here. And like, I don't know if it's in Tales or if there's like a supplementary set. Uh, we're like 10 minutes into this video now, but like one of the things I've been thinking of is that Flesh and Blood has blocks without saying it, right? right? Like, well, this is projecting, but Flesh and Blood could have blocks without saying it. You have the block that's like the gem block, right? Where you have uh, the heart, the eye, and the shard. And then I think that this next block is like the, the, 
the location block, right? Where you're gonna have the library and then, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the mountain, like the Eisen's Peak. Uh, maybe that's the, the fable for, um, for uh, anyway, it's gonna be some sort of location within Aria. Uh, and then I think there's gonna be a third set that's gonna be like um, the crucible of war of this block. It's gonna be like the supplemental set of this block. So like if I had to like put my money, if I had to put my money where PVE was, hey, I, I would put money, if anybody wants to bet with me, like I, I would straight up put money. Um, if I had to put money in where PVE was, I would probably put my money that it's the next set because uh, they, they've focused so much on the draftable nature of Tails uh, in, their, you know, in the conversations and in the interviews. Uh, so I would guess that this is going to be just a regular set. But like, I'm telling you guys, PVE is here. You guys can let me have it in the comment section. When I'm right, I'm gonna be so happy. This channel is only gonna do PVE. This is going to be, it's gonna be called Kitchen Table PVE, not TCG. That's all it's gonna be. That's a joke. It's, it's I have to, you know, that's not gonna pay my bills. Yeah, that's what the market updates are for. But anyway, super excited. Tales of Aria gonna be awesome. Mark Poole, welcome to the Flesh and Blood community. I like to do this anytime, like when TCG, or when uh, Tularian Community College, when Brian got here, I was like, hey, welcome to the you know community. Uh, tried to do it with Steve Aoki. Welcome to the community. Um, it's just exciting. It, it, it's, uh, it's exciting to see the community growing into these names. It's not just us anymore. Like it's not just the, it's not just like a, a small little community. It's like, it's getting bigger with these bigger names. I don't know what that means. It's gonna lose a little bit of its like smallness, but it's really good for the game, which is really good for the community, which is really good for us, which is really good for me. Hope you have a great day. Remember to be kind to the people around you. I'm excited.